Hello YouTube, this is the Java Programmer, and we are in the middle of a series of videos on getting a strategy and signal manager up and running. In our last video, we were looking at this EMA 20 price crossover signal. We were going to finish it out a little bit more, but I want to clean it up a little bit because the way it's currently written, our, our chart does not display until our first update price comes through. And I want to see the chart immediately when this class gets initialized. And then on subsequent update prices, we can get the chart to update. So I have the EMA20 signal up in front of us here. And I'm just going to switch things around a little bit. For instance, um, we check to see if the chart's null. And if it is, we create it. So what we want to do is we're just going to do this part right up here in the constructor. Um, that way, it'll, it'll just be done. Now, we also need to move these two items up and make them, make them private variables. That way, they're available throughout the whole class, not just in the one method. So if we do that, then we can do those here. Oops. Um, in fact, we don't even need, we can just do this instead. We might. Let's see, create the chart initialize the chart so I think here yeah, we might not even need to define these out we can just put them right in where they go like that this greatly simplifies our program we get rid of some lines of code and I think uh, points Um, yeah, we might need that, but we don't need that here. That still can be done. So we need points because we're printing out what the last data point is. Um, points. And we don't even use bars. So I think, think that does it. We just simplified our program, this uh, signal a little bit. Let's uh, let's go ahead and run this and see what we get. So the first time I ran this, uh, the market was not open. But now the market is open. And we can see here that we have um, our signal in our graph. So the idea here is right now you can see that the price is below the EMA 20. And so we want to have this signal fire when this last point goes above the uh, the price. So, see like right there where the price just jumped above the EMA 20, that would um, fire a up signal event, as in a crossover going up. And uh, so let's see if we can... Um, Instead of printing out our price update, let's see if we can actually print out what we would want as a signal. We are printing the tick. And let's look at that uh, real quick. So in a data tick, when we print it, um, we are printing the, the ask and the bid price. So for this signal to fire, I think we would want 
this point to be above our ask price. Ask price is higher than the bid. Um, as you can see here, we've got uh, 0 0.398 and here is 0 0.395. So when this goes above, when it was below, so if this being the last point, if the previous point <coughs> is below and this point is above, then we will have this signal fire. So let's see if we can figure this logic out. Alright, let's let's run this and see what happens. <clears throat> so here's our graph to see what's going on. Right now, price is definitely above the EMA 20 point. And so let's see if we can get a signal when this thing crosses over. <laughs> I think we should have seen the signal generate right there where it dipped right below and uh, I think there might be a bug in the code so what we're gonna need to do is we're gonna need to print out uh, both of these conditions so I think that's it. Let's run this again and see what we get. Okay, I think we have a bug in our code somewhere, and I'm thinking it's in the way that we calculate the EMA. So I'm going to go ahead and stop this. Um, I am not seeing the signal happen, and uh, we will take a look at how our EMA is calculated. Okay, so let's look at how we calculate our EMA. So here we have our EMA indicator. And we call this get EMA. And we TA lib. All right, what are we using to calculate convert bars to array? So we take our close ask plus our close bid and we divide by two. So from what I understand the close price is sometimes very modified so I think what we should do is use our open instead of the close. So that's going to use the open of the bar versus the close of the bar. But other than that I think that should be correct. Um, And that's going to take effect for all of our indicators. So let's give that another shot and see what happens. Obviously, it's very important to make sure that you get your calculations correct because if you start trading this with money and you've got those wrong, uh, like I have them in this, pro in this software, you can definitely lose money quick. All right, let's um, let's cut the number of bars down. But so instead of seeing all this history, let's look at uh, maybe this maybe about a third of what we're looking at. So 
in here we call get history and history amount is by default 500 so hmm we don't pass in a history amount let's see config um Let's do it through our conf our uh, indicator config. So we're going to pass in history amount. So we can say something like uh, this: indicator config dot set property history size. In our case, we want to do probably one hundred and fifty. So here, when we will say if config dot get property string history size it's not equal null we are going to say history amount equals integer oh why is this Type. Ah, okay. We don't need to do an if. Um, because this is already an integer. Say so if it's equal to zero, we'll just set it to five, uh, five hundred. So that way we can control how much history we want. Let's try it out. Okay, that clearly should have generated the signal. Um, but something's not right with our numbers, so let's see if we can try to debug this a little bit more. I figured out what my problem was with this um, signal. And basically, the condition that we're looking for here is we're looking for the price to jump from one side of the EMA all the way to the other. And uh, typically, that doesn't happen. It happens in, in stages. Like, um, if you think of the spread, uh, and it's both the, the ask and the bid are below the EMA, uh, we're looking for both to be above the EMA in the next tick. So from one tick to the next, they go from both being below to both being above. And uh, that's kind of unrealistic. So I think the better way that we want to write this signal is we want to have a signal state. And uh, that signal state will basically start off as none and then uh, depending on if they're both below or they're both above that would be the bid and the ask uh, then w the state will set to be below or above and the only time that that state changes is if they both are below or they're both above and the last state is different than the current state so I think that's going to be better. So for this signal, uh, we're going to create a, a enum right here in the signal. And we'll call it, uh, I don't know, signal state. But this is not going to be a public enum. This is going to be a private. And we're going to say none below and above. And so this class is going to have a private signal state state equals none. 
Signal state dot none. There we go. So the first thing that we do is we say if the state uh, equals um, signal state dot above. So we say if 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 it's not above, but yet the price is above so um, the the ask is greater than the EMA and the let's see um, we're not going to need to get we only going to need the current EMA point so we don't need that anymore that simplifies our life a little bit. So current EMA, and we need also the, we don't need the last, so we can get rid of our last tick. We're not gonna need that either. Um, so we'll get rid of all this. This thing's gonna get really simple for us, which is what it should be. So if the state is not above, but yet the, whoops, the uh, tick ask is above the current and the tick dot get bid is greater than the current. Then the state is going to equal signal state dot above and we're going to print our we crossed up and so the other condition is going to be very similar we say if the state equals signal state dot below if it doesn't equal below and the tick dot get ask is less than the current EMA and tick dot get bid is less than the current EMA then we've crossed below so we're going to print that and we're going to set the state to below I think that should do it for us and let's um, let's see plus just put it on the same line. Okay. So I think that's going to make our lives a lot easier as far as code goes. So let's run this and see if we can generate this signal. There we go there is our signal so when we first start up there's been no there's no signal uh, and right here the price both prices the bid and the ask are less than the EMA so we get our cross over signal going down so in the next video, we will actually send out this signal message. We will put a mechanism in place to put the signal into the queue so that the strategy uh, can pick up this signal. Uh, thanks for watching. This is the Java Programmer, and if you like this video, please choose like in the bottom corner.